have an ABB 580 drive that's really giving our automation side some trouble. Now in this particular job, we were doing a plant retrofit and we were putting in some multi-stack chillers. With that, we were converting all the pumps for the chill water and condenser water from regular XL starters into variable speed control via the uh, loop pressure. The drive of choice in this particular application was going to be the ABB 580s. They're fantastic drives, really enjoy them. I think they were a good upgrade from the 550. The 550s are also still very solid in my book. I got called in because there was some confusion and the team was having some trouble getting the drive to respond to the automation system. With a drive like this, it's honestly a pretty simple input. We just need a reference point and we need a start signal. But you have to be really specific with where you do that. By the way, I got a new camera to give it a different perspective and give more of a a in-person feel and vibe to it and I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm experimenting with it I'm seeing what I like about it I'm curious to your thoughts so far it's been pretty fun to try a different format that I haven't done so far and it allows me to really show a lot more of the live action as it's happening versus trying to capture it with a with an external camera that I can't just wear I tried doing one of the pumps that wasn't being used currently on the chill water side to try to get it online and show them exactly what needed to be done for it. But because of the confusion and such, they hadn't done the other drives. They'd only done one drive on each chill water and condenser water. So far in this retrofit, we've gotten one chiller changed out. We're in the process of getting it finalized and then we're gonna change out the other chiller so we can keep the plant online as we go through the whole process. You know, the pump, the skids, there's some uh, storage tanks, there's a lot of piping we had to do. We, we, had a complete reconfiguration of this plant to make it fit a more efficient design with the multi-stacks going in. With me moving over to the other chill water pump that was already commissioned and working and without me having to take the time to fully do the other one, that's something they could do at a later time. It also meant that I needed to put the one that I started to work on in hand. What I didn't realize at the time was that this was a primary system. So when I first shut down uh, the pump, I didn't pay enough attention to the piping itself and in the plant. I ended up just killing the flow to the chiller altogether, causing it to trip out and shut down on no evaporator flow. This particular system does have a bypass between the two pumps. So all I had to do was open that bypass up, that established flow, and I just had to close a isolation valve on the secondary chiller that we hadn't changed yet so that it would force that pump to strictly flow through the multi-stack chiller that I was trying to keep. Initially, when I first got there, the team had a printed out stack of uh, ABB 580 manual uh, that they were using to reference this on the job. But as I got to looking through that manual, I began to realize that this isn't the right one. And the reason for that is we have a eclipse drive, which means that it's a, it's a, the drive heads on top and it has a bypass section on the bottom. And those have a different parameter to that. And that ultimately that's what really tripped everybody up. They did have the actual install manual from that drive that came with it in the box there in the plant, thankfully. And how I determined that was the dash 01 or the dash 04 uh, termination on the manual itself. When we compared the two manuals and I saw the Dash 04 on it, I, I took that one. It's when I was able to pull the right schematic that I needed to wire in the Eclipse drive itself. This is where the automation contractor we were working with, not our own in-house people, but somebody we were contracting with, uh, made their mistake, which is okay, it's a very reasonable mistake. So in the very front of the book, it talks about how to wire in a regular setup on the drive itself going through the head without the bypass assembly being configured. In that scenario, it references as pulling in your start stop on DI1 and they also had DI4 and so they were thinking that it was supposed to be DI4 that they were using and maybe have a jumper on DI1 or vice versa. Typically, I would use DI1 as my program start-stop signal coming into the drive, and then they're going to have their analog hooked up on AI1 on top. The issue with that is this is incorrect configuration for the ABB Eclipse version. So if you go to the back of the manual, you'll see that there is another schematic that dictates exactly how they want you to hook up the Eclipse version. So your AI for your analog reference is still gonna go straight up to the ABB head, 
but your start stop is going to run through your bypass assembly for the eclipse. The factory had already ran a jumper between terminal one and terminal seven inside of the uh, the bypass assembly that so that was already there which was their start interlock but you could tie that into some kind of emergency shutdown or something of that nature there is also a separate set of contacts for like the fire protection system if they needed that but ultimately i needed to run a wire between my terminal two and my terminal five by wire i specifically mean the the physical start stop itself i needed to land those between those two terminals and that would get my enable that the machine is looking for. And that took care of them from there. You know, once I moved it down, I was immediately able to put it into auto operation. Prior to this, all they've been able to do is just work, run the machine in hand at a fixed hertz, and, and that's it. And so now they've actually got a full speed reference control that they've been looking for to be able to dial in and tune this loop the way it was designed to be. Did go ahead and went over to the condenser water pump, the one they had wired, the other one they hadn't yet. And I got it changed over as well, which is, is literally moving one set of wires. But this time I made sure to actually turn the chiller off first, then go shut my drive down, move my wires around, and then gently turn it back on. It tends to appreciate that a little better. Guys, always make sure that if you manipulate things as part of your testing or operation, for example, me having to open that bypass and close that isolation valve at chiller 2, put all that stuff back. You know, it's, it genuinely is sometimes we get in a hurry, we don't think about those things. But it's a really big deal and it has a huge impact and it can give the customer a bad experience because now they had a you know technical failure they didn't have to have so just be mindful of that stuff always take a time look around see what hasn't been put back or what hasn't been done yet and make sure that it is exactly how it was before you started that didn't need to be changed if you need a one-on-one -on -one consultation or any kind of tech support anything of that nature please feel free to reach out to me and go to my website and sign up for one of those services there. It's more than just a chiller side tech support service. You know, we're here to assist you with whether it be an RTU, a split system. It's a service built around your needs. And then the consultation is, is there for your personal training. It's a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me directly. And I can help guide you through whatever the issues are, your challenges are, whatever you've got going on. With that, MTT, take a family, take a spouse. Hope you enjoyed this. And let me know what your feedback is on this kind of first person format. Uh, I'm looking at different ways on how to blend this in with my more traditional ways of doing things to just kind of give a different feel and perspective and yeah, just give it some more. This particular call, for example, would not have been possible for me to, to film like I normally would. I just would have missed out altogether, but because I was able to use this new camera and kind of give a, this, this just first person view I was able to capture the entire thing. I appreciate y'all. We'll see you around.